there. Welcome to Elm Colors. I'm Erica. On today's video, we are going to be doing letter C from the How I Color Alphabet series videos. And today is C is for crown. And what better books than Hannah Carlson to find your crowns in? She has so many different ones to choose from. And uh, it's sometimes hard hard to pick, hard to pick which ones. And even like on the front of her book, you know, you've got this beautiful crown right there. Um, so I wanted to show you a few uh, samples throughout her books. I'm going to show you a couple of pages that I have colored with crowns in them. And then we are going to color one, possibly two crowns together today. Uh, so let's just start with her newest book. This one is gorgeous. And there are, it's, it's Tales from the Forest Kingdom, so there's definitely going to be some crowns in here. Um, for example, there's that one. There's this one over here. Uh, but one of my favorites in here, here's one with a little, on the little frog here. One of my favorites is this one. And I think that it is very interesting because I think it, what would be really fun, a really fun way to color it would be to make it look like wood, like it was carved from wood and then it turns into the leaves and the acorns. I just think that that, I, I see it in my mind as I look at this page and I really wanna sit down and color this right now, but <laughs> this is not on my list. So this might be one of those books that I just kind of sneak in there because this is, I love this book and I have only colored one page in it and I really wanna do more. Um, but yeah, so that I just wanted to bring that point up because just because it's a crown does not mean that it needs to be made from metal. I do typically color my crowns in some kind of metal surface, but um, a wooden crown, I think, would be beautiful on this page. Okay, so there's that one. I've got, let's see what we have in Magical Dawn here. Oh yeah, so this one is a good example of where you have, you know, a nice smaller one that you could do on this whole big bird page, or you have this huge full page crown. Uh, another one that is gorgeous and one of my favorites, and I think would just be beautiful in different metallic tones. And then you've got several big jewels in here. Uh, just, it, it would be so beautiful. I really like the, the flowers that are on here as well. And those you could either do, you know, in flower colors, you could make them metal, you could, yeah, all kinds of different things. You can make them in jewel tones to go with the jewels that are on here. So many different options. And I think that that is one of the fun things about coloring crowns. Um, and then what is the next one? There's one more that I wanted to show you guys. Oh, this is another full crown one, but this one has like a cool insect. This is just another neat, just, it's just cool. You know, it's just a cool page. Um, so yeah, so that is, those are just a few examples of ones that are not colored by me yet. Um, Daydreams actually has several that I've colored. And this one in particular was the very first crown I ever colored. I had never colored any kind of crown or metal or anything like that before. And of course I decided that I wanted to try to make it look like a rusty old crown. Uh, it looks okay. It looks, it looks like a, you know, like a well patinaed metal. Uh, but yeah, so I did this, I did this one. This was one of the very first pages I did in this book. I think it was in, and it says, uh, from 2017. So <laughs> It's been a few years since I colored that. Um, yeah, it's nice to look back and see how far I've come to. Um, but yeah, so I was really proud of that the day when I finished it and um, still, still kind of like it. <laughs> All right, so here's an example of tiny little crowns and I did one more golden and one more like a bronzy color. Um, those ones are really easy and simple to do. You just have to get a couple of darker colors like thrown in there and then you've got your, your um, contrast all set up. And then here's one I did, this one is an older page as well. Um, I had done the crown and the cat and I think 
maybe the background. And this was one of the very first times that I used Neo Color on a background, uh, and I wasn't quite sure what to do. So you can see a little bit of a difference between this page and this page. Um, yeah, so I wasn't quite sure how to do the background. I just kind of decided to try it, and I only did one layer, so you can really see some of this stuff. But it doesn't look terrible. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop doing that. Uh, <laughs> So this one I made into like a pewter crown instead of it being like sparkly gold or silver or anything. It's like a a nicely darker color. Oh, here's a bee from last <laughs> the last video. I forgot that I colored this guy. Uh, so yeah, so there's one that's like a yellow jacket hornet kind of thing, definitely with the bright yellows. So, but that is not this video. This video is about crowns. So one last. Oh wait, no, two more, sorry. Two more, let's do, I'm gonna show you this one. Here's another one that is an interesting crown um, because it's got these candles melting on it and I didn't wanna do any gold on this page because I wanted everything to be really dark and um, cold. I wanted everything to feel cold except for the fire. And um, the silver, the silver crown is the way to go for that. But you can also see I've taken different parts of the crown and I've added in, uh, you know, a few of the colors that are mixed around in the rest of the page. And uh, yeah, I really, I really liked the way this whole page turned out. But yeah, I really liked the crown. I was pretty pleased with that one. And then I think the last sample that I have to show you is this one. This one's not quite done yet. I still have to do, I'm going to paint the background black because... I just think it'll look better that way. Um, but this one, I actually, I did color um, it in silver at first. And then I wanted, I just wanted some sparkle. <laughs> I really just wanted it to be sparkly and shiny and fun. So I took my silver stickles and outlined the crown. I took a silver gel pen and outlined the smaller parts where the stickle wouldn't fit in. And all of the inside is kind of like a white with blue shadows. Um, so yeah, and I did the same thing on the earrings just to make it match. So this was a really fun one to do. And I think it sets, it, it offsets well with, I mean, it's all cool colors except for her skin. Um, you, you know, the pinks and purples are even cool on, on her hair. Um, so I think that the crown, the silver, the sparkly silver in the crown just really pops from that. So so yeah, so that is the last sample one that I have. And I think we are going to attempt this one today. Now this isn't as intricate as some of the other ones that you'll find out there, but I thought that I would, um, we might also do a little bit on this one because this is even more simple. But um, I thought this one would be a good one because it does have some of those intricate details and stuff inside of it. Um, and this is the type where you can see all these cutouts, but since you don't see any of the lines of her hair behind it, I would not make that see-through, I don't think. Um, you could, you absolutely could make that see-through, but I would probably, I'm probably going to just color that solidly and then we'll, we'll go from there. But yeah, so this is another one. I probably will show you both because this one is an easier one to do. And this one's a little more intricate. So so let me um, get you zoomed in and I will get my colors together and we'll get started. Okay, so I've decided to go with a golden crown, but I'm not gonna do a bright gold. So I'm gonna do a little bit more of a muted gold, or I'm going to attempt to at least. <laughs> so I like to use these two colors quite often in my gold combos. So this is dark brown and bronze from Prismacolor. And then I'm gonna add in a golden rod. So this is kind of a brownish yellow. Then I've got this light yellowish tan color. And then at the end, if I decide I want to, you know, change the tone a little bit, I have this really light yellow color that I can bring in a little bit more yellow. I like to have about four colors. Anytime I do a metal, uh, anytime I do any metal, I like to have you know, a very dark color, a very light color, and then two kind of in between to blend everything together. So what I'm gonna do first is since I'm using Prismacolors, I am going to, well, first I'm gonna put my backer page in. I'm gonna add in wherever I think shadows might be. So 
I'm gonna use my dark brown to do that. I'm not going to be pressing hard at all when I go through and do this. Um, and I am going to speed this up so you can kind of see what I'm doing, but it doesn't take a year because crowns sometimes, especially ones intricate as this, sometimes take a little bit of time. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna add in all of my shadows first and then I'll come back and talk to you for a second. Okay, so I did want to talk a little bit about why I placed the shadows where I did. So I'm going to have, basically my light is going to be coming straight, straight front and center onto this lovely lady. Um, and that's a good thing to decide before you start placing your shadows. If you want, you don't have to have like everything be perfect, but if you have a general idea of if the light is coming from the right or the left or straight on or from the top or from the bottom, it it helps you to know where to place the shadows. So if I have a light coming straight in at this crown, the center areas are really only going to be shadowed where things would overlap. And as you move outward from that crown, then um, if you'll notice as I, as I go this way, all of the shadow lines are on the left side. And as I go this way, all of the shadow lines are on the right side, which I forgot here. Um, most of them anyway. I think I messed up on a couple of them, but that's okay because it's coloring and it's not gonna be noticed really. Um, the other thing that I like to do is when I have very sharp um, curves, I guess, or very sharp points on the crown, so like this section right here, I like to take a little bit of the brown and extend that line into um, the white space a little bit and then go along the edges of that point. So again, I did that the same thing around these points because those are very, very sharp points and I'm gonna do the same thing around these points. And then anywhere else where you feel like it, it might need it. So I think here another one is, is a good point place right here. You could do it right here too, but this one is not as um, pointy. <laughs> Uh, and then the other thing that I like to do, make sure to do is anywhere where things overlap is going to be darker. So I just add in my little bit of shadow for that as well. Um, I am going to add in a little bit of shadow here for around this jewel. And then along right under this because all of that will be darker as well. Okay, so once I have those base shadows in, then you have to decide on if you want something that's really shiny gold or if you want something that's just a gold color. Um, with something this intricate, I'm gonna just go with the gold color. I'm not gonna make it super shiny. Um, we might do like a super shiny gold on the other crown because that's a more simple shape, so it's easier to achieve that shiny look. Um, but for this guy, it's just gonna be it's just gonna be the gold color. Um, one more spot that I might add a little bit of shadow, when you have rounded objects like this, it's sometimes nice to have a couple of different places where you have your dark shadows. So since this light is coming straight on, I am gonna add a little bit of shadow right at the bottom here, just right here, very lightly, and again, right here. Um, Let's see where else. I might put a little ridge of shadow in this crown right here, in that tip. And I think that that's gonna be good. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through with my next lightest color, which is the bronze, and I'm basically coloring right over top of my brown, and then um, coming out into the white areas just a little bit. Um, and I will do that consecutively with each color. So, um, 
let me just show you just what I mean. So I'm gonna come in and I'm going to extend, I call it right over the brown, and again, I'm using light pressure right over the brown, and then extend that color just a tiny bit out into the white space. Oh yeah, I forgot about this part too. So, when, so sometimes when there's lines like this, I like to go over that with the with my darkest color as well. I forgot to do these. And that just kind of helps give another added little detail in here. Um, okay, so yeah, so I've done those couple of things I'll show you in here. Again, I'm just gonna go right over the top of that and extend that color outward a little bit from where Okay, so there's with the bronze, and now I'm gonna use my goldenrod. And again, I'm coloring over top. This is light pressure, extending that color out even a little bit farther. And you can see, especially with this goldenrod, it's starting to take that nice gold color on. And then I'm gonna use the sand. I have to sharpen it just a little bit. I have to use, I'm using the sand to again go over everything and extend that color even farther into the white. And then let's see what it looks like with the deco yellow. I'm gonna try this and see if I like it. Yeah, I like that. So this is with deco yellow. And this is again light pressure over everything. So yeah, so that's basically what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna go through and do the whole crown and then I will come back and talk with you again. Okay, so you might see some spots where you think maybe we need a little bit more color. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna very lightly extend this color into some of these areas, this light tannish gold color, and then I'm gonna use the, the deco yellow to make it look a little bit more gold. I need to come in here and get these areas. And around this jewel and then the tips of these guys. Okay, so especially through these areas in here, um, anywhere where this is curved like this, you're probably gonna have a little bit of a darker yellow. So I'm gonna put that on the curved areas. I'm gonna add that yellow color. Um, and then in a couple of these intersecting lines, I'm probably just going to add a little bit of the dark color, that darker tan yellow color as well. Um, where else? Let's do it right in here. And this is me just kind of picking some spots at this point. Like I'm not really sure the 
reasoning behind me picking these spots and I'm going to pick a couple spots in the center here. And we're going to come down from this way a little bit. And again, there's that curved area in here. Okay, so now I'm going to take my Deco Yellow. So this is a really, really light yellow color. And I'm not going to color all the way. It's not going to meet. I do want to reserve some of those white highlights because then it'll look more metallic. Metal is all about making sure that you have contrast. So you want to make sure that you have a nice dark and really nice highlights as well. So you can see I'm leaving quite a bit of white space in some of these sections. And I'm just extending this down this way. And then I'm coming up from here. Okay, I hope this is looking, <laughs> I hope this is looking okay. A lot of the times when I, that's why I always say these are tutorial-ish, because a lot of the times when I color, it's just kind of like a, let's throw something at the page and see if it works. <laughs> uh, thankfully, a lot of the times it does. Um, but I am not always confident that it's going to, so I'm always excited when it does happen when it does turn out the way that I was hoping. Okay. So there's some areas down in here and those dots that are in between the, like these dots here, I'm just gonna outline those a little bit with a darker brown and um, make it so like there's little, just little bumps on the, on the gold. Okay, I think we're good with that. So now what I would need to do is go back in one more time and you can either use this dark, a dark brown or you can also use a black for this, this um, step. And basically that is to go in where the darkest shadows would be and darken those shadows back up. So specifically I'm gonna focus on um, these little indented areas And since I had decided that where my shadows were before, this makes this job just a little bit easier. So I know it's gonna be super dark there, it's gonna be super dark on this side of this gem and then on the inside here. And so that's basically what I'm gonna do. I'll speed that up so you guys can see that, but yeah, it's gonna be the same process all the way around. Okay, and then since I went through all of those smaller crevice areas, I am going to go back in and where all any of those areas where I extended the color into the crown from where it is um, very pointy, I'm gonna darken a little bit up right around the black line that Miss um, Carlson has drawn in for us. All right, and so that is how I would approach this crown. Now what I'll probably do is I'll make sure to write down my color combo because I will probably end up doing that same gold color on this giant chandelier down here too. So uh, yeah, I really like, I like how that one turned out. So uh, I will have the 
color, excuse me, the color combo down below in the description box. But remember, Prismacolors colors are not the only pencils that you can do this with. You can also use similar colors in any color set that you own. And I am actually on my next one, I think I'm going to use some Crayola pencils and show you how I would do a crown with those. So I will be right back with you guys and we'll work on that. So I started to move on and then realized that I probably need to color in the gemstone <laughs> on, on the crown because that's part of the crown. So let me grab a couple of colors. I have no idea what colors I want to use on this page, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna grab something and we'll we'll get some of these little bits and pieces colored in. I'll be right back back with you. Okay, I've decided that I'm going to do a diamond for this big gem, and then we're gonna do blues as accents around the crown. So for my diamond, I am gonna use some cool grays and a little bit of this powder blue. A lot of the times when I have done diamonds in the past, I actually haven't done too many diamonds because that one is the hardest one for me. I don't know why, but I tend to try to do it in blues and then it always ends up not looking like a diamond. So we're gonna try it in these cool grays and then add a little bit of this powder blue and see if that, how that works. So I am just going to use my darkest gray, which is a 50% cool gray, and I'm going to pick a couple of spots that are the same on either side and add that darkest color. Okay, then I'm going to use the 30% cool gray, and again, I'm going to pick spots that are the same on either side. Okay. And then I am going to use a little bit of this in the corners here. That was this 30% as well. So this is my 20% cool gray. You want to have a couple areas that are just kind of white as well. Um, you know what? I'm not going to use the blue. I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, and then I'm going to come in with the white and really try to blend things out a little bit. Okay, and I just kind of covered all of that so I can go back over with the gray, the darker gray that I have and darken some of those lines if I want. Darken bits and pieces. Here and there and then I can always come in with my white gel pen and make areas brighter more white and then a lot of the times what I will do is I will add like a little sparkle shine and this is hard to do with the I read I much prefer doing this with the um, Posca but we'll try it with my gel pen. So you might not even be able to see that. That's gonna be hard to see, but it's there, it's there. Okay, so now I'm gonna add in the blue gems in a couple of places, and these are gonna be, it's gonna be a pretty dark blue. So I've got Andanthrone blue first. And I've got China blue. And then I've got Cerulean, right? No, this is non-photo blue. And then I'm gonna go over all of that with the white and blend that together. And then I will use my white gel pen again. I literally just had it. Where did it go? Goodness. And she's already got the highlight in here. So I'm just going to do it just like that. 
And then I'm gonna go through and add in that blue color in just a few more sp spots. I'm gonna use my darkest, nope, that's not my darkest. I'm gonna use the darkest blue and just draw in a little bit of a shadow. Uh, the same here. And the same right here. And then come in with those other colors again. Lightly shade outward from where I put my dark color. And then go over all of those with the white to blend it. And there we go. I did say I think that I was going to go around some of those dots, didn't I? I think, I think. So we will, I'm gonna show you that really quick. Again, I'm focusing on where the light, since the light's gonna be coming in straight from the center, I'm going to, on the dots on this side are all gonna have lines on this side, and the dots on this side are all gonna have lines on that side. So I'll show you kind of what I mean. So I'm just gonna trace a little bit of that, the side of that dot. And it just kind of gives it a little bit of a hint of dimension. Okay. All right, so there's my crown. Yeah, I wish you could see that shine a little bit better, but that's okay. So there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the other crown that I have planned, which is going to be a more simple crown, but it's gonna be in Crayola colors. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so here's our next crown. And I decided that I was gonna do this one in grays so that it's gonna give me a little bit of a silver look. So I've got, I do have four pulled. I don't know if I'm going to use all four of these or not, but these are all Crayola pencils. So these are the four. I've got black, gray, ash, and Timberwolf. And I probably will come in with my Prismacolor white as well. Like I said, I use that Prismacolor white and the Prismacolor cream to blend almost everything that I have. I have boxes of them just sitting and waiting for me to use them. So, um, with the Crayolas, you can do the same kind of technique. You wanna make sure that if you start with your darks, that you just do it very, very, very lightly because these don't blend quite as nicely as the Prismas do, but you can still blend them a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start with all of my shadow areas with my black, and then I'm gonna work my way up and see how we do. So I will speed that up and let you guys see. Okay, before I move forward, I do wanna talk a little bit about where I placed my shadows this time. So I'm going to have the light coming in from this direction this time. So all of my shadows, most, um, let me restate that, most of my shadows are on the left side of any lines that I see, okay? Um, there are some sections where things would, like where these this corner is here and this corner here, those aren't the left side, but those probably would cast a little bit of a shadow. So I'm just gonna very lightly add in some shadow in those areas. And then of course, anywhere where there's a lot of, where there wouldn't be a lot of light that got, gets in there. So 
for example, down in this, in this section down here, those are just gonna be black. Uh, the other thing is, is I did a little bit farther, a little bit more um, dark on this side, and then not quite as much over on this side so that I can have that light highlight be right here instead of right in the center. Okay, I'm gonna continue on with my next color and I will talk to you guys here in a sec. Okay, so the only bad thing about Crayolas is they are not as pigmented as I would like. So I'm going to attempt to go back in with my black. Again, see if I can darken up any of these areas where I know there would be shadow. I'm having to push a little bit harder, but I am getting some good dark bits in there. Okay, that'll work. So I'm gonna go through and add in the shadows in the areas where I know that they would be darkest. And um, I will be right back with you guys. that 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 looks then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that cooler gray color which was called ash in the Crayola set and I'm going to lightly go back over some of these areas I like it um, I wanted this crown to be a little more in that cool gray tone and um, the white over top of everything really helped me get that that nice cool gray but with this ash color I can come back in and get some of that tone kind of spread out into the crown again and then I'm also going to use this ash to do some of these raised areas I'm not going to add too many highlights I mean too many shadows to these raised areas because I kind of want it to look like they are standing out a little bit more so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this ash color. That is gonna be my shadow color. So on the areas where I think there might be some shadow, I'm gonna add that in there. Typically when I, if, if two lines come together, there's probably gonna be a shadow there. If something overlaps something else, there's probably gonna be a shadow there. That's just kind of a good rule of of thumb to have. Crayola doesn't really have a very light um, cool gray. The light gray that they have is a little warmer than what I would like. So I might just have to come back in with this ash again, just a little bit lighter to get the color that I'm looking for. Or I might just be able to blend it out with the white. We're gonna see. We're gonna see which one works best. Yeah, and then on this part, I am gonna put a little bit of shadow there. And then we're gonna have some shadow over here. 
There we go. That'll work. Just kind of guessing on some of that. <laughs> so yeah, so then I'm just gonna come in really, really lightly with this same ash color and extend, oops, I didn't put that in there, okay. And extend that color, darn it, I forgot this area too. So this is getting medium pressure, but then now when I come back in, I'm using super, super light pressure to extend that color a little bit out into the white space. Decided what I'm going to do with this area down here. I think I'm going to do, mm -hmm, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm not even going to worry about these little half circle things. I'm just going to come in and shade it just like I did the top sections here. Okay, and then I've got my gray. Oh wait, no, this whole thing needs to be black. And then I've got gray. And I've got this ash color. And then I have that Timberwolf color, which is super light. And then I've got the white to go over everything. Okay, and then I'm gonna come back in with the black right on the edge here. We for sure want it to be a little darker. And then right here. And then, let me see if I can add this ash back in and change that tone just a little bit. All right. So there we go, there's all of the metal done. Yeah, this part down here on a little bit darker, so you can see the difference between the bands that are going across this way and the things that go around that way. I probably should have left this raised edge the same as those, but I think it looks okay. I think what I'm gonna do now though is I am gonna color this, this area in. Um, I'm going to use the black and the ash for this. Okay. And again, I'm going to use the white to blend it out. Add some of that shadow back in where I can. Okay. Yeah, and then I'm going to use this ash color and just do a little bit of hard pressure with that and then fade it out to a lighter pressure. So this is a lighter overall metal in here. I do want to use that very light pressure like I had used on the raised parts and then I'm going to use the white. Okay, so there's our metal bits, and then I am gonna add in some color in here. Let me um, let me grab my colors for the gems and other little things that I want to add color. All right, I grabbed four colors. I've got um, black cherry, dark purple, lavender, and um, 
Deco Pink. Um, and I'm going to use these colors just in a couple spots around here. So I've got this great big gem. And then I'm going to work this color into a couple other areas. I'm trying to blend this out with my pink. So on this stone, everything, it's just going to be darker around the outside and then blend it in. Okay, and then I'm going to use this um, lavender color. I'm just going to add in this lavender in a couple spots. And then down here, I'm going to put the lavender in the center. Um, yeah. Okay, dark purple around the edges here to darken that up. So the only other place, oops, I forgot an area. I'm going to do a little bit of the ash color there. And then just circle it with the white prisma. Okay. So the only other thing that I will do is I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do it now because um, I still have to color the skin of her, but I will end up going through with a silver gel pen and doing the little dots and outlining these little circles. So, and that would be the last, the last thing I'll do. I'll actually probably bring that silver up into this, this one as well. So you can kind of see how that would look. So there is our silver crown. So we have a gold crown, we have a silver crown. And uh, I hope that that helped in some way. Like I said, all of the um, colors will be below in the description uh, that I used. And you'll be able to hopefully, if you have Prismas or you can find the Prisma colors online, you'll be able to find comparable colors in whatever pencil sets that you have. Um, this video was a little longer. <laughs> than the other two. So um, I'm hoping to, I'm trying to keep these a little shorter on the shorter side, but we'll see. We'll see how this goes going forward. So that was it for C is for crown. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Our next color or our next um, item is going to be letter D and that's D is for door. So we'll get some different door colors going on. And, um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this today. I hope it helped you in some small way. And until next time, thank you so much for watching. Bye.